you very much and welcome. Please tell me your name and the project you are associated with. Thank you very much, David. Uh, my name is Vítěr Lička. I am the founder and the first president of the Free Republic of Liberland. It's a startup country. It's based between Croatia and Serbia, only 10 kilometers away from Hungarian border. It's seven square kilometers. It's fairly nice territory and we want to be the spearhead of freedom as well as the spearhead of implementing new technologies such as blockchain in for the case of the nation state. So um, after the uh, peace of Westphalia and uh, over the course of a few hundred years of uh, wars and uh, uh, territorial conquests, um, I think most of the people watching this video would say, oh, wait a minute, I thought you could not create a new country <laughs> out of the blue, but it looks like uh, you are trying to do exactly that. Uh, he did it because he didn't know it's impossible, right? That's the kind of this phrase. But now we, we actually we were very serious about building a new country. In 2015, we decided to, to look for the territory that would be most suitable for it. And, and we had a list of places that had a special status and Liberland had this extra special status. Plus it was in a very good uh, geo geopolitical situation in which none of the other countries were claiming it for more than 25 years. So when we stepped in, we stick the flag. Uh, we received enormous media coverage because we did something that was legally sound uh, and we claimed a piece of land which was terra nullius and and we were expecting that we might receive like 20,000 people to apply for citizenship in a whole year but they actually came in the first hour and in the first week we had 200,000 so it was a huge interest and it still is a huge inflow of new citizens and new applications from for citizenship from all around the world because we are a special situation, we are not a separatist movement. We are, we are not trying to break out from other country. We simply started a, on a country on the territory uh, that was in limbo, that was kind of an island in the middle of ocean where nobody was laying any claim. And uh, and it, I think it's a great start for Liberland. Of course, we have challenges ahead. Uh, we still need to make sure that Croatia understands exactly what we are doing, and we are about to present them the Liberland as the, as the big picture very soon with all its elements. Um, countries uh, organize themselves under certain uh, internal rules and then uh, get into various uh, more or less voluntary agreements uh, among themselves as well. Uh, in the process, they tend to give up certain freedoms mm -hmm. Uh, and the assumption is that, on balance, uh, this is a net positive. Um, Liberland uh, has a different view. Uh, it, it aims to create a new balance uh, with, with more freedoms preserved. Mm -hmm. um, how is it going to be able to uh, achieve that preserving the maximum uh, set of freedom. We're starting with similar principles like the American Revolution, right? And, you know, funnily enough, the levies that the king uh, was putting on, on American people were very small compared to the taxes that people are paying in Western world, right? But they still felt like they had to kind of start a new country because they felt they are under pressure. Yeah, we really feel that the modern societies, they should be growing 10, 20% a year. They are growing 1, 2%. There is a huge, uh, huge problem with overregulation and overtaxation in the Western world, and it's very difficult to change it from within. Like all these regulations, and there are like two million regulations, for example, in the EU alone, and they make five thousand new pages of regulation every time they meet. It's very difficult to do anything about it. You know, there are sometimes there are some movements they try to roll back a bit. There is a great example, for example, in Georgia, but usually it doesn't last very long and the country goes back on its track on making more laws and hiring the taxes. And, uh, and what, when I understood this, it's kind of inevitable process in which the democracy always deteriorates uh, into kind of semi-communism at, at some point, because when the taxes are higher than 50, 60 percent, it, it is almost possible to say that it's half, half basically slavery that we are living in, right? And, and when I understood this, I, I also understood that the only way forward is to go one le level above 
and start a new country, start basically from scratch. Uh, and of course, the system will also come up with new rules and new regulations. But what we did with our constitution, we tried to make, we put, tried to put as many bricks as possible. So there is only one institution that can make new laws, the Congress. But there are three institutions that can get rid of the all new laws, uh, and that's that's basically public veto, similar to Swiss democracy, that's Senate, kind of the House of Elders in Liberland, and uh, that's also the Constitutional Court. So we just try to make sure that that yes, there will be very little new laws, and if they come and they are no longer needed, it can be very easy to get rid of them and and. Uh, and really try to build up a society which will be running on minimum amount of, of laws. Why, why do we need you know, these millions of pages of regulation if, if basically reasonable society can run maybe, maybe on 120, 150 pages of regulations? Um, we didn't mention Bitcoin or blockchain yeah. uh, uh, during this initial part of the conversation. How does that enter the picture? Well, of course, uh, just like blockchain revolutionized the financial world, and it's, we're still not at the peak of that, of course. It's, it's, you know, Bitcoin is the seventh biggest currency in the world, but it will very likely be the biggest in the near future, and it will bring about a, a huge revolution in, in the way the governments are also running and treating the financial system. But uh, the ultimate application is for the organization of society itself. And we have adopted Bitcoin uh, one, so on the day that Liberland started. So in 2015, Liberland was having all its reserves in Bitcoin and, and that actually lasts until today. Uh, but uh, the big thing is that we are, I think, another six years ahead of any other government. We're implementing the blockchain systems for all the internal processes that the government does. So our Congress, our justice system, our Senate, uh, all the important institution, including registries, everything is running on a blockchain, basically. That is confirmed by, by the citizens. Every citizen can become a validator of the system and they can uh, help us to, to maintain one ledger of all the transactions inside of Liberland. Uh, the traditional view is that you don't want to know how the sausage is made, that politicians should be able to meet in behind closed doors, because they have to discuss and make compromises and the public uh, should just uh, trust them. So your approach is the uh, polar opposite of that. Mm. The, the broadest possible public should be uh, able to, to see, to mm. verify uh, in a transparent and accountable manner what the political process looks like. Uh, we have seen uh, a, a very sharp decline in uh, political activism and civic activism more in general uh, in Western societies from the simplest uh, um, lack of participation in, in voting mm -hmm. uh, to uh, more uh, broader lack of, of, of participation and activism. Do you think that your approach could rekindle uh, a, a more active and more eager uh, public participation in the political process? Well, of course, like if we allow online voting, it's, it's going to change a lot. But I think the most important thing is the society, right? Like you, there is one percent out of one percent in each population that really says the, and they feel that the, the freedom matters, right? And maybe if you scale it up, maybe it's three or five percent. In each society. Unfortunately, it's not much more than that. That's why you see this decline. If you have democracy, people that really care about their freedoms and they are not willing to sell them for the, their security, there is not too many of them. And of course, if you get these 3% of people activated, they can actually switch the mindset of the whole society. Uh, but again, what is much easier is to try to attract those 3% or actually 1% out of 1% in reality, very little small group, which on the global scale is millions of people, try to attract them to the territory, prove that the system of governance is sound, that it is actually able to deliver amazing results, even getting a completely new startup country to get it recognized, because the system will be very efficient and, uh, 
and transparent, as we said, and, and it could really be the example of, of a new type of nation state for the future. And that example can, of course, inflict a change in the way other governments, governments are running. Uh, now, Liberland has a physical uh, territory. Uh, however, uh, the level of interest in Liberland is such that even if uh, uh, just a fraction of those would say, oh, I actually want to go uh, uh, on, on the island, uh, they couldn't. So what are your plans uh, in, in being uh, able to provide a, a platform for those people to, uh, to uh, live uh, in some sense in, in Liberland? Well, first of all, we started e-residency program, similar to something what Estonia does. So we allow people to become active part of the society without becoming full citizens or without coming to live in Liberland, which is still a bit of a challenge. Uh, that's one thing. So we can have 8 billion e-residents and it would be lovely to, to have that, or at least a couple billion right in the future. Uh, and that's one way. And also the other way, we're actually right now building a digital twin to Liberland, where all the interactions and all the future of the development of Liberland is being defined. So for us, it's literally a place where uh, together and with the help of Zaharit Architectural Studios, we are defining the, the future look of Liberland itself. But, you know, funnily enough, it has sparked enormous amount of interest. Uh, and I think we, we actually got together a great technological alliance. Uh, so this, this tech, digital Liberland that we are creating will be the space for these e-residents and citizens to interact as well, to have their offices, uh, to, to have a, a, a seat in a virtual space right which is going we're moving still more and more like people are spending their lives on zoom but why not spend it if if they are want to sit at home for whatever for COVID or for other reasons why not spend it in a place where you have all where you have all the necessities to make great presentation to meet other people and interact with them just like in the real life so our land registry is becoming also a big social market of ideas and of things and and we are launching it officially now during the chicago biennale in two weeks so that's that will be a very big event uh, so what uh, uh, can uh, people who are watching this uh, video do if they are interested uh, what are the next steps uh, that they can... Uh, well, it's start? fairly easy. I think the e-residency takes some five minutes to do. It's, it's a process in which we get to know the people that, that apply for citizenship or for just for e-residency. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, that we, we are building a trustworthy society, that, that everybody that comes in is somehow checked and they don't have some, some black spot from their past. Uh, so that, that you know, when you deal with Liberlanders, you're dealing with, with righteous people. Uh, that's what, so what we said at the beginning, right? That we're building a place where righteous people can uh, live and prosper without the burden of too high taxes and too much regulation. So, so when you get through that stage, we understand how you can be helpful to Liberland's future. Uh, you, you get a call from one of our representatives and we now have representation in more than 100 countries around the world so we can you're going to likely receive a call in your mother language uh, wherever you are and uh, and you can basically join the activities of the embassy or a local representative office in your country and then of course you're very welcome to come to liberal and the biggest event will be the anniversary now the on 13th of april and the second biggest is usually our festival summer festival in liberal on 13th of august which is a big social gathering Vit, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, good luck uh, with uh, the forthcoming uh, development and flourishing of uh, uh, digital Liberland, which uh, I believe uh, will give rise to, to so many new initiatives. I'm sure we will have the opportunity to sit down and uh, make a new video about them and tell uh, them to, to everyone who is interested. Thank you very much, David. Great pleasure.